What we have here is my Apple extended wired keyboard that came with my late 2009 iMac and it's been working great up until yesterday when my son was telling me he was having some trouble with the th three key and no matter how many times you push it or how hard you push it there is no three that appears on screen so what I did is I used a credit card popped off the key cleaned it still no go so then I popped off the little key switch underneath and just uh, dumped a lot of dehydrated ethanol in there used a swab swirled it around blew it out wait until it dried tried it again still no go uh, the little rubber suction cup underneath appears fine to the eye but apparently the contact either the PCB trace is gone or uh, whatever that little b bottom part of that uh, dome rubber nipple thing that's gone it's not making contact when you push down and believe me I tried for over an hour a lot of different things to get it to work the three key is dead so I just said to my son alright fine um, here's a three key over here you know I mean we've got it let's just use it but uh, ultimately I decided well this keyboard it's now 2017 July uh, it's been around for a while so what are my other options and of course I'm going to consider options that will help me cut the cord what I ended up deciding on is ba -bum -ba -bum, this one it is the wireless aluminum space gray keyboard by Matthias and because I'm in Japan um, I ordered it from Amazon Japan and uh, this is just saying it's the US English ASCII version of the keyboard and here's the keyboard itself uh, fresh out of the box still with the plastic affixed to the bottom I want to test it out first to, to see is it gonna work is it broken am I gonna have to ship it back you know if I ship it back you know why take off the plastic so I've got the included USB cable uh, plugged in because according to the instructions I need to charge it first fully charge the keyboard before using it and it could take five hours but it usually lasts one year wow I mean how many products do that a year that's pretty awesome so that was maybe not the number one reason but a very close number two reason why I bought it one year between charges that's just incredibly impressive the other reason I bought this is because of these four keys just above the numeric keypad on the right uh, it says one two three four and these are Bluetooth buttons that let you sync it up with multiple devices multiple Macs uh, iPads and iPhones and because I have multiple devices in the house it's nice okay it's nice to be able to move the keyboard especially because this is wireless um, once it's charged I can remove the cable right so it's nice because I can just touch 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 to switch between devices no messy setup and repairing and all of that so that is really the biggest reason I bought it another reason is it's in space gray the new iMac Pro coming up in late 2017 is supposed to have a keyboard like this in the space gray but who wants to wait right <laughs> we're all impatient man and who knows maybe a few months a few months from now after the iMac Pro is out some of you watching the video at, at that point in time will say hey it's already out but um, is this keyboard better than Apple's offering well you just saw my white keyboard with the wire so in terms of is it better than that yes because this has a battery no cable except for charging uh, another thing you know I was I know Apple has the aluminum with white keys keyboard out that has a battery I know that All right, I know that I'm aware of that but the reason why I bought this is because it has something that Apple's keyboard doesn't have which is these very convenient four buttons here which let me easily sync up with other computers so that really is what won my heart and the layout you know it's 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 the same Apple's new battery powered keyboard has taller keys up here but look this is pretty much like my old keyboard and here they are uh, the old 2009 and the new Matthias um, the Matthias is a little bit almost undiscernible but it is a little bit wider than the Apple 
and I don't really know why. <laughs> um, it didn't have to be, but somehow, I, I, you know, I, yeah, the edge is here between the key and the edge. It's a little bit wider than this. Same on the opposite end. Maybe there's just a tad bit more space between here. I don't know why they, I, I guess to differentiate it so you could see, hey, this is not from Apple. But other than that, I mean, look at the keys. It, it's pretty much the same as what you're going to find on the Apple original. So uh, I've already been using this format with the, this size keys, and it's never been a problem. So I didn't see any advantage to Apple's new battery powered keyboard with the taller keys. And I think the keys here on Apple's wireless keyboard are also a little bit bigger, but you know, it, it doesn't really matter so much. So I, I'm not really going to do an extensive review of this. You can probably find those, uh, those other videos. Uh, but just basically, I wanted to say that I chose this and I ever, I've already given you my reasons. Um, but one other thing I would like to mention is how do the keys feel? Now, I've been a keyboard typist since the, since the 1980s, okay, that's a long time. <laughs> and I type pretty fast, and I, I have a feel for keyboards. Some keyboards are nice to the touch, others not. I like tactile feedback. I like my finger to sink down. I mean, I used to, back years ago, decades ago, use those massive keys where you had loads of key travel and the click, clicky, clicky, clickety, clack type keyboards. You know, I don't need that today. Um, I think this keyboard is okay, all right? But how does the feel of this compare with this? First of all, the sound. The sound of these keys is different. Um, I would say this is more of a higher pitch sound. It's a little bit more plasticky. And this is a little bit more rubbery. So I guess it's the rubber nipple that's underneath is doing its rubbery thing, whatever that is. And this, I don't know. It, it, well, maybe you can detect the sound a little bit, but um, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just different. It's not the same. All right, so that's the sound. But what about the feel? Even if you don't care about the sound, you might care about the feel. This feels a little softer, or I can kind of, because I know what's underneath, it's the rubber nipple, I can feel it. This, it feels a little bit harder. If I could if I could compare the two, which is softer, which is harder, this is a little bit harder to the touch. And it makes more noise, at least the high frequency, it appears in my ears as being noisier. Okay, so um, maybe not a big deal, but for those of you who say, is this, because it's aluminum and pretty much the same shape as this, going to become almost an identical replacement for the Apple? I would say, well, not identical because the sound is different and the feel is different. Again, the sound is more subdued on the 2009 model. I don't know about the new battery powered uh, extended keyboard and all that. I just know that, you know, I, I've kind of grown to like this 2009 version. And more subdued sound, less plasticky feel, more rubbery feel, more pronounced sound, a little bit more plasticky feel. Which would I say is cheaper? Well, I just bought this, obviously I don't want to say it's cheaper, but technically it feels a little bit cheaper than this. Do I have regrets? No, because again, what's my only other option? To buy the Apple wi wireless keyboard? Well, if I do that, I lose my benefit of this. Why didn't I just buy another one of these wired ones? Because I'm using it with a MacBook Pro. I want to have some freedom, and it's kind of nice to cut the cord. I mean, it's 2017, for goodness sake. So there's a lot of reasons. But basically, I really don't regret this. Now, there is another version that has backlit keys, but uh, it costs more. And I really don't need it. I mean, I've got a nice desk lamp. That's what you're, That's the illumination you're seeing here is, is the overhead desk lamp. So I, I would never really need it. It would just be a waste of money. Plus, if you look at on their website, Matthias, they've got a light that just goes around each key. It's, I mean, if you love light bleed, I mean, that might be good for you, but I, I didn't really like the look of it. You know, the new MacBook Pros 2016, 2017, they have the LED light that's in the center and there's really no light bleed, and that's kind of neat, if I can be honest. And that's really not the look of the uh, Matthias backlit keyboard. So that's another reason I just went with this one. All right, I turned off, I've got a desk lamp that lets me turn off um, 
left or right sides independently. So I turned off the uh, lamp directly above the keyboard so you could see the LED a little bit better. Again, the cable is plugged in because they said it takes five hours to charge, which seems like a long time, but hey, you get a year's use out of it, so no big deal. Anyway, it's charging now, and according to the documentation that comes with it, uh, it says an amber light will appear on the caps lock key shortly after you start charging and will disappear when charging is complete which means it's never green, it's never purple, pink, or a rainbow, it's only amber, according to this guide. But what color do we actually see? But folks, that looks kind of green to me. I don't know about you, but it looks a little green to me. It doesn't look amber. Um, it Anyway, maybe that's nitpicking, but that's just one thing I want to say. It looks green. So maybe they got the manual wrong, or I don't want to say it's a defective unit, but there is that difference. And it doesn't matter if you, you push on it or not. I mean, it looks pretty darn green, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. And also, when you look at it from the side, if you look at it from this way, yeah, you can see the light bleed. The light's bleeding out from the gap, the gap that's between the key and the aluminum frame itself which is, you know, I'm not a big fan of light bleed, so I noticed that. And, uh, well, it's, okay, it's not Apple, right? Apple, I don't think would, yeah, well, then again, you know, the older MacBook Pros had light bleed too, so who knows? We can't say Apple would have made it better. But um, I, I do notice that, and I want you to be able to see that. And to illustrate just how much light bleed, I've taken their own documentation and uh, it looks like it's shooting through a prism. It's multicolored. You can see the light reflecting off of, of this piece of paper here. It's a shocking amount of light bleed. So a serious amount of light bleed uh, from that little tiny LED there. And, you know, I guess you won't notice it unless you're charging and you only do that once a year. Or if you have a caps lock key on and, and then it lights up. But, folks, this is not amber. I mean, I guess it might be some... Looks like a little rainbow reflection actually in there. So the documentation doesn't seem to be quite accurate to me, but but it doesn't matter. If it charges up and works, that's really the main thing um, that interests me. And then I'm just showing the Matthias website. You can get it in silver, gold, space gray, rose gold. Again, I preferred the, the darker color uh, of space gray. And um, so you can buy whatever you like. It says 99 US dollars because I bought mine on Amazon Japan. I paid more than that plus the 8% uh, sales tax. Um, but, um, you know, it's roughly the same price uh, once you convert the currency and exchange it and all that. Overall, I've, I've not given it a full test yet other than just the feel of it and the sound of it. And uh, the pairing of it looks to be straightforward. Uh, so I don't anticipate any problems um, or defects uh, based upon what I've seen here. The, the keys, you know, they feel all right. It's just not exactly the same uh, as the Apple keyboard. So keep that in mind if you're interested in making the purchase. And if you want a Space Gray wireless keyboard right now, uh, then this is really the best pick, I think. Plus, even if you say, well, you know, I want to go with the Apple, I want to get the Apple wireless keyboard, it looks very similar to this, except for the top row keys that are bigger, a little bit bigger arrow keys. You're going to have to charge it once a month. See, that's the other reason. Apple, they're supposed to be better, right? It's supposed to be, with all those employees and all that money, you'd think they make something the best, but you'd have to charge it once a month. This, it's once a year. So, again, that's pretty incredible in my opinion and uh, so that's another reason I bought it so I hope that this little mini review even though it doesn't cover all the features and the fancy things you can find those in other videos I hope this overview kind of helps you get a general idea of what direction you may want to go you want to go with Apple wireless you want to go with Matthias and there are other some there are other wireless keyboards out there that I considered but really for the overall look of it and feature wise that's why I went with this. And again, even outside the US, the price is very comparable to what you'll find uh, in the US. They even have the British version of the keyboard with the L-shaped uh, return key and all that. So uh, uh, 
hopefully again this this video will uh, give you some assistance in making an informed purchasing decision well I spoke too soon I thought I was going to end my video on a happy note but now I'm going to have to return it and I may not get another replacement because honestly if I get a defect on the the very first one. I mean, what are the odds? I mean, I might as well start playing the lottery. The odds are so good, right? So, anyway, my son, he found that the D key was flopping around, and so I pulled off the S key to compare the bottoms and see how they look, and everything in here is identical, but if you compare the keys, that little guy is partially broken off, not due to my use, this is a factory defect. What kind of quality control does Matthias have? This is, is completely unacceptable. I mean, one of the most basic tests of the keyboard is you look at the keys, you tap on each one of them, and make sure it's, you know, not flopping around. Well, here we are again, the following day, thanks to Amazon Prime, the replacement Matthias keyboard has arrived, and since I didn't show you an unboxing before, I'll go ahead and do that for you now. What a productive use of box space. <laughs> Has a little handle. I don't know how necessary that is, but uh, well, there it is. So we'll just open them up here. Same as before, it includes the instruction guide, you've got the charging cable, and, and then it's plastic wrapped. And the D key on this one looks a little bit better. And there's our cable. Checking all the keys. They seem uh, decent enough. If you press the corners, you can kind of see they're not the most stable keys in the world to begin with, but uh, at least these are not broken. I mean, uh, the D key was in some seriously bad shape. I mean, even this one, it, see just how much it wobbles when you touch it. I have a Logitech keyboard. It's a solar keyboard. These keys are much more, I would say, stable. The Matthias keyboard is still a bit wider, just like it was wider than the Apple keyboard, but um, it's no comparison when it talks about the height. Of course, there's no solar panel on this one. This is plastic, this is aluminum. Um, and because this whole thing is plastic, you can I mean, it's only a few months old, but you can you can see scratches already. Very fine hairline scratches on the solar panel. So even though the keys on this are very nice and soft and more stable, comparatively speaking, and actually never need to recharge ever, uh, it the the plasticky feel of it. I'm not sure if I really care for it as much, but um, showing you the backs here. You've got this advantage of the Logitech, if you can call it that, I mean, they are pretty flimsy. You put a little bit of weight on it and these are going to crack, but nevertheless, it does let you adjust the height to what I consider to be a nice level, and this is fixed, so you don't really have a choice. That's not to say this is bad, but, well, that's just another difference. Again, this is the K750 solar keyboard uh, for the Mac. So again, there's a comparison. It just, I mean, this feels a little bit more rubbery, just like the Apple keyboard. This feels a little bit more, more plasticky a bit. Uh, and the keys themselves, just the feel of them, they're not, they just don't feel very expensive. These are, well, a little bit more matte. But this has noticeable stickers. The letters are, no, are ob pretty obvious stickers that are just affixed on there. And these, I'm not sure. Um, you can't tell if they're a sticker or not. 
I don't know if they're molded. Probably not. If they're not molded, that means they'll come off of after a while. But with a sticker, I mean, eventually this would come off too. But I uh, just don't want to give you a comparison. They're side by side of those two keyboards. And here's another zoomed in view, just so you can see the comparison between the Logitech and the Matthias uh, about how wobbly the keys are. You know, if I hold it on a corner here and push down, you can kind of see that, how it goes. And then if I try to wiggle it, it's kind of hard to wiggle it. But if I do this, push down, <laughs> look at that movement. And then if I try to wiggle it, wow, it, you know, <laughs> doesn't take much for it to really wiggle all over the place. Whereas this one doing that doesn't do it. This, it's pretty easy to do. So, in terms of key stability, the Matthias is about the worst I've seen. I'm not saying that it's going to be impossible to use or really bad to use, but if key wiggle bothers you, then clearly this Matthias keyboard would not be for you. Logic Tech keyboard, much more stable. And of course, Apple is very similar to the Logitech keyboard. The manual said, plug it in, and the LED should start lighting, showing that it's charging, uh, unless it's fully charged, and then it won't light. Well, this is fresh out of the box. I have it plugged in, and I know it's drawing current. 5 volts at 400 milliamps, 0.4 amp. So current is flowing into it at a good pace. I mean, if it's full, it shouldn't be charging at that pace, I wouldn't think and yet no LED. So, uh, okay, fine, let's assume that it is fully charged. According to the manual, if it's charged up, I should be able to push the button on the back and then it's going to give me some flashes and come on. Okay, well, now it's coming on. And you know what? This is actually amber. Now how about that? That's uh, that's definitely not green. You remember saying the first keyboard was very noticeably green. This one is very definitely uh, amber with a little bit of shades. I mean, if I wiggle the key, it kind of changes a bit. But um, I also see less light leakage. Well, maybe if I put my finger up, you can kind of still see it. But it's got some leakage, but maybe not quite as bad as the original. Or maybe it's just hopeful thinking, I don't know. Depending on how you shift over the key, it's either green or amber. Well, at least when I let go of the key, it looks more uh, amber. On my video camera, it looks a little bit yellow, but it's actually a reddish yellow or an amber color. So I guess you have to plug it in and wait a little while and then push the button and then you'll see an LED. Didn't say that in the manual, and that's not what happened on the first keyboard I had, but as you can see here, that's what the situation is. And again, it takes five hours to charge. And here's another angle from the side. So it appears really not to be different than the first keyboard in terms of light leakage when viewing it at an angle from the side. Um, I still think this is you know, kind of tacky, low quality. It's just not befitting of a, a keyboard made out of an aluminum frame that otherwise looks pretty good. But again, how often are you going to use the caps lock key and charge it? You're going to charge it once a year, right? So I guess you could explain it away, but uh, the company behind it clearly didn't pay attention to the little details. Maybe I'm just too much like Steve Jobs. I don't know. But uh, if I was running Matthias, I would not have allowed that much light leakage to come through. Well, it's been a few minutes uh, charging and you can still see that on the my little current meter and meter here, I've got 430 milliamps, so it's largely unchanged. And the power source is my trusty iPhone 7's power adapter. So uh, that can put out a fair amount of current. And um, so it would seem that about the max that this keyboard is going to take is just under a half an amp. So it's still charging, but I can just show you, you know, the, the, the sound and the feel of it. I, 
I guess it's okay. I can type fairly fast on it. I, it just it just feels the key. I mean, the frame is great. It's aluminum, but the keys just. Maybe I'm just too just accustomed to the Apple keys, which were a little bit softer touch, less wobbly. Um, it's not a big hindrance. And again, the, there's big benefits to having these four keys and the one year of uh, battery life. So it's kind of a hard decision, but no matter what. You saw what happened on my first keyboard, so be prepared. You might get one with a... A broken key switch and you may not it may be difficult for you to notice it because the keys are the movement of them is so great and they're so wobbly anyway but uh, I'm sorry I actually recorded it or I thought I recorded it on my camera but my camera was turned off I actually didn't record that part but the the keyboard I already shipped back to Amazon the key was really jettisoning at, out it was clearly uh, broken because of that one tiny little piece three out of the four were okay but one out of the four wasn't hinged so it was pretty bad. This key, this this one doesn't have that problem. I've touched all the keys. It's just a, a bit louder. By the way, if you're wondering what's what's down here, it's my uh, uh, humidity chamber for my lenses and cameras. So it keeps um, the humidity down to a predefined level. I usually keep it to 35% or less, and it also has a temperature meter. And then of course the tripod, tripod you're seeing in the background, it's got my Sony PCMD100 which is why the audio on this video is pretty decent because uh, the recorder is pretty good with the mics and the XY configuration there. And another shot of my little cabinet here, uh, sold in Japan. Uh, made of metal, glass front. It's kind of neat, you have to plug it in. It doesn't really draw that much power and it uh, keeps the mold off your lenses in a humid place like it is here in Japan. Anyway, it looks like this keyboard is going to work out. Um, I'm not 100% satisfied with it because of what I've already explained, but uh, if you can live with those, with those caveats, then clearly, uh, I mean, the look of it, space gray, aluminum frame, you're not going to be able to get anything like this until the iMac Pro comes out. And even when the iMac Pro comes out, are you going to pay $5,000 for the computer only to get a keyboard like this? I mean, even if you do, you're going to have to charge it once a month because Apple didn't have the foresight to put a big enough battery in it. It's kind of like the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros, right? They slim down the computer only to slim down the battery. Uh, Apple. Well, anyway, um, I hope you found this review uh, useful of the Matthias wireless aluminum keyboard in space gray. Uh, this is again not the backlit type. They have another version of this for more money which has uh, backlit keys with plenty of light bleed. So uh, you can have a look at their website and see if that appeals to you. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.